no matter what tool you're using to generate your site, whether it's a static site generator like Jekyll or Hugo or Gatsby, or you're running some other kind of build to generate your site, since we're creating sites that are served statically directly from the CDN, we can start to do some cool things with Netlify. And one of the things I wanted to show you now was split testing. So here's the, the uh, docs page for that in Netlify docs. Um, but I'll actually just show you through an example of doing that. Now we could use any static site generators I mentioned, but I thought it'd be fun to use Gatsby for this particular example. So this is uh, a repo which is available uh, in the Gatsby organization. It's for a, a simple kind of blog theme. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'll create uh, a couple of different variants for split tasting right from right from this repo. So I'm going to click this little button to deploy it to Netlify. Now I could go and clone it down and then create a repo in my own uh, GitHub account and then make a site from that. But I'm feeling lazy, so I'm just going to click this button, which is just a kind of a shortcut to, to do that for me. Uh, so I'll connect this to, to my GitHub account, uh, and I'll give this uh, a little name. Let's say test... A Gatsby split test. Create that. And now what's happening behind the scenes is Netlify is cloning that repository into my own GitHub account. And then it's setting up a new uh, Netlify site for me. And it'll start building that. While it's building it for the first time and um, installing its dependencies and those kind of things, let's just do a little bit of tidying up. Let's, uh, it's going to create this name for us automatically, but I think we can give it a slightly more uh, memorable name. So let's say, let's call this again. Um, let's call it um, Gatsby Split Test. Save that. Now that'll be the URL for this site. Now, um, in a moment, we'll go and configure split testing. But before we do that, let's let's get this site deployed first of all. So it's already building our first version. Let's go and see how it's getting on. Okay, so looks like the deploy is finished. Let's go and take a look at our our new site. So here we are. It's been deployed onto that URL on Netlify. Um, and here we have it. We have a site that's deployed. We can navigate around, do funky things like change the, the theme. Um, but we're going to create a split test now. So we've got one version, but we want to create another version that maybe we can test against that. So let's create a different variant. Let's create a, a version that instead of these purple links, we've maybe got uh, a blue link instead. So um, one of the things that happened when I deployed the site is that it cloned the repository into my uh, GitHub account for me. So if I go over uh, and look at that code, here is the code. It's in, in my organization, my uh, my account, rather. Um, and what I can do is I can create a, a branch deploy here that we can then use as the basis for a split test. So before I do that, let's make sure that Netlify knows uh, to build every single uh, branch that we see. So here in our deploy context, we can see that at the moment it's only deploying the production branch, which is the master branch. If we change that, we can say, uh, please build all the branches that we push to the repo. So now with that saved, okay, so now we're here in my uh, my version of the code. Uh, let's go and create a new branch. Let's call that, oops, try blue. We'll create that branch. So in GitHub now we've got this got this new branch. Let's go make a make a change and then we can see that coming through. So make this uh, make this little edit here in the colors config file. Let's just uncomment these. And this and say blue if I and now we're committing that change to our new branch. And what should happen now back in Netlify land uh, is our deploys. Now we've got um, a new branch uh, that's being being created. Uh, we created our branch here. Now we've done a push to that branch. Uh, so we're starting to get a build that's going to run uh, on that branch. Now for every branch that we create, Netlify is going to give us a URL to access that branch. So it's really useful for doing things like um, building things in feature branches so you, or creating uh, QA environments, that kind of thing, because they all get deployed out to the Netlify ADN. They all work as production, which means when we compare them, they all have the same uh, performance profiles. They have the same infrastructure behind them. So when this build is finished, we'll have 
um, a tri blue branch that we can we can either just hit directly or we can start running split tests. Okay, so our site looks like that's been deployed. Uh, so let's have a look at our new uh, branch deploy. And as I mentioned, here's our URL for that. You can see it's blue. Uh, we've got our tri blue branch on our site, and if we compare that, uh, where's our other? There we are to this guy. Uh, so that both are still active, as you can see, uh, but we now have uh, our new branch deployed that we can you know, navigate around. It's an entire site uh, just created from that branch. Okay, so with that in place, now we can start doing the cool stuff. Now we can start creating uh, our split tests. So once again, back in the Netlify uh, admin, if I go, we go to our split tests here. Um, in fact, Netlify has already picked up the fact that there's only two branches, so these are the only things we can test against, but we could specify whichever branch we like choose how we shape the traffic between those different branches um, and you know, once we're happy we hit start test and we're off and running so now Netlify is starting to shape traffic at the CDN level uh, from uh, between these two different branches uh, and that's happening at random so it's going to be interesting to see I'll tell you what I don't want to hit that directly I want to go to our production URL so let's see if I refresh that okay that one is, is at random gone you know it's a 50 50 chance uh, that's gone to the blue version so what if I open up an incognito window here? Um, let's just oops. Let's just take our URL. Let's see if we get lucky or if we're going to have to hit a few of them. Okay, that one's blue as well. <laughs> this might take a while. Um, let's try it in Safari. Okay, that one's purple. Great. So uh, let's kill that way. Um, so now on the same URL, we're getting um, you know our our purple, our original version of the site that we can navigate around as normal, or again on the production uh, URL, this site uh, is going oops, is going uh, to the blue version, our new version that we're testing. Uh, and again, we can just it's an entire site we can navigate that around uh, as before. Okay, so um, so no, now we have our traffic being shaped between those two things. Now you might think, okay, how do we um, measure the performance of these two things against each other? Well, we can absolutely do that with uh, analytics. If I go back to our, um, our deploy settings, one of the things that we could do, if for instance you're using Google Analytics, we can start to share, uh, share information with Google Analytics about which branch is being served for each of these. And we can do that with our um, uh, post processing we've got some snippet injection here uh, and what we can do uh, is ask Netlify to inject the correct analytics tags for the different branches uh, in fact I've got no analytics uh, Google Analytics in here I'm just going to go and swipe an example of you know the Google Analytics uh, code just for the sake of illustration uh, we'll pop that in here what happens here is every time uh, a build runs uh, once the site has been generated Netlify will inject this into each of the pages. Um, and what we can also do is we can uh, uh, use some templating to say, this is the, the name of the branch that, that created this build. So if we add this in as well. Let's see if we've got the right place. Uh, I think the right syntax is to do it like this. Um, so now what would happen uh, is each time, uh, say, uh, GA, um, so now for each build, let's just take a look at that snippet again because I've closed it. Um, as our build runs, we're now also expressing into the into the site which branch created that. So we can also measure the results of our split testing in Google Analytics as well. So there we have it. That's uh, split testing uh, in Netlify. Uh, in this instance, with a Gatsby site, um, we've got our different sites being still being served. Tell you what, I'll turn this off again. Let's just see how quickly um, you can kill these tests as well once you're finished with it. Um, so now our uh, site here, that'll go back to purple. Uh, and this one, of course, is, is remaining the same. Um, we've turned that off now. The logic is no longer present in the, in the Netlify uh, ADN. Um, so that ha that's it. That's split testing uh, on uh, Netlify uh, using Gatsby as our example in this instance. But uh, this works just as well for whichever static site generator you're using, whether it's Gatsby, Hugo, Hugo Jekyll, uh, Eleventy, uh, whatever your tastes are, um, you can add this capability to your static sites uh, thanks to the logic that lives on the Netlify CDN. Hope that was useful. Uh, we'll look at some more examples another time.